It has been a really frustrating week on eBay, guys. I haven't been posting videos on this YouTube channel because of it. I've been sifting through my listings. I've been doing a bit of a stock take just to see what isn't actually listed in my store. Not because I haven't listed it, I'm very much anti-death pile. I think when you get the item, you should be listing the item and storing it away for it to sell. But I've been going back to old listings that are well over a year old. And I've tried to manipulate the listing by reducing price to try and get it to go on to sell, fix up the title, those sorts of things. Because eBay does recommend that that's what you spend your time on. Spend time on what you've already got and make it the best it can be. Optimize it to be the best it can. So I thought, let's do that. Let's have that exercise. And um, I, I was sifting through everything and there were multiple listings that I just simply knew. I, I actually vividly remember listing the item up. And then I jumped back onto search for it and it wasn't there. And I just had no explanation or no answer as to the reason why it had just simply vanished. And that was so frustrating because I didn't know how far that was going to go, how many items that actually was that were vanished and disappeared like that one that I'd seen. So it was ultimately, I've, I've found so far 15 items that I believed I'd listed up. Now, I've got 1,500 items in my store, but I've found 15 that I do remember listing that just simply wasn't there. So whether you're an inexperienced seller or you're a seasoned veteran, this is something that you need to be aware of. Those old items that you might have had around for a year or two, they may have disappeared. I don't have any explanation for it. I went online to have a bit of a look and I know that this is a bit of a common theme. This does happen every now and again, uh, but I don't know the reasons as to why. The only thing that I can think of is the fact that it was just a bad item with really bad photos, maybe a bad listing, maybe the wrong price, and eBay's just cleaned it out. They've just wiped it out and, and I don't know why they've done that because I feel like they should be telling you if a listing's gonna be removed. Um, but I've been trying to work it out. I've been trying to go back through all my stock. I've actually gone ahead and I've listed those 15 items up. Believe it or not, five of those items have already gone on to sell. There was an action figure that sold for $80 the other day. We got an $80 sale price during the week. It sold within 24 hours. And I, here I am thinking it's been up in my store for over a year and it hasn't been. Yet I vividly remember listing that item up because I was so excited to have found it in a thrift store for $5. And then sure enough, I find it again, list it back up again, and it sells in 24 hours. So it's just been a really frustrating week, guys. And I did want to touch on that in this video today to make sure that you do stock take your inventory. Go back through, see what you've already got listed. If it's only a couple of hundred items, it shouldn't take that long. And I think it comes back to the point that eBay talks about as well, where they're saying to go back and work on your existing listings. I think that's incredibly important because if you keep refreshing them, if you keep doing maybe even the sell similar, um, you're always gonna have a new fresh listing and it's gonna be less likely that that listing goes on to disappear. So it's a lesson learned for me. I'm really gonna be conscious about working on the stock that I've got uh, and always keep it ticking over, always keep it fresh, always making some small adjustments. Uh, but I did need to kick it off with the video today to let you know about the frustration that I've had this week. Um, another thing that I've also had to take this week, which has actually been, it's actually been a really good part of the week. It's been a lot of work as well, which has prevented, uh, prevented me from making videos, but I've actually adjusted this room, this office that I'm in, this garage at my place that is an eBay business. I've just gone ahead and changed it all. Uh, I went out on Facebook Marketplace and I did a bit more furniture purchasing, which is what I did. I used to flip furniture back in the day. Well, I was out there buying uh, bookcases. I've got two really nice bookcases now for video games and DVD TV seasons in allotments, big groupings of uh, DVD seasons. They're going into the big tall bookcase and then the video games are going under the window. Now, if you guys have uh, watched this channel before, I used to have a desk under the window. So to have that now full of additional stock uh, is really good. It's actually opened up the space a whole lot more in here. It doesn't feel as tight uh, with two trestle tables that I'm sitting on here. This trestle table that I'm on now is for my listings. Uh, it's got my laptop here. It's got the printer as well, which is really cool. Um, so it's, it's really a one-stop shop. I don't have to run upstairs too often into the third bedroom. And I do have some really cool plans that I'm working on in that third bedroom. So you're gonna have to subscribe to the channel uh, to see that update on what that room, that third bedroom is gonna look like. I'm, I'm still tinkering away, but I'm very excited to bring it to you. Um, guys, the weekend sales, look, it's been a really good week. We had a lot of sales come through, uh, but there was some sales that came through over the weekend as well. Because of how good the week was, it meant that the sales this weekend were a little bit less. I still averaged out to about $2,200 for the week, uh, but we've got about $940-odd worth of sales this weekend. So we're going to go through those. There were 26 sales in total. I shipped off four of them last Friday, so we've got 21 sales to get through today. And uh, we're going to have a look, first of all, at the video games. 
So we had a total of seven video games sell over the weekend. And look, it was not too bad. The average sale price was $19.70. Here they are here. Uh, we had a bit of a mix running from sort of $10 sales with the Undead Nightmare, uh, Grand Theft Auto 4, and then the biggest loser went for $12.50. But then we had some better winners here with the UFC and Minecraft going for $15 and $16. But these were the two best of the bunch. Driver, San Francisco, internationally went with the $20 postage, $24.50. And then Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo DS. We got a $30 sale price on that one there. So guys, it was about a $19.70 average sale price, $138 worth of revenue. They just keep ticking over for me. I do love the video games. I'm gonna go ahead right now and put them into these medium tracked post envelopes that we get from Australia Post. Uh, no bubble wrap required, they will just go straight in. I should really quickly mention, I am a very analytical person when it comes to the numbers of this small business, which I think ultimately really does help me out in trying to scale this thing. So I wanted to quickly touch on this video game category to give you a bit of an idea about the actual true take home profit of that $138 worth of revenue. If we have a look at the numbers here, it was a total profit take home of a little over 50 bucks. Now, I look at that and I think, look, I'm buying these games for basically five bucks a piece, $35 invested to make about a 50 odd dollar profit. I think that's pretty good. Ways that I could actually make a few more dollars is by not going ahead with these medium track post envelopes for the cheaper games. This Red Dead Redemption and this Grand Theft Auto 4, it's only selling for $10. So why am I investing $4.50 into postage when I could potentially go with an untracked postage envelope for about $2.80. I don't have any here, but I'm thinking moving forward for anything sort of under $15, I'm gonna go ahead with that. But outside of the actual ways that I can save money, the fact that I've been able to sell seven of these out of a total of 20 sales this weekend, tells me that the video game category does tick over and does sell very well. I don't have a crazy number of video games in my inventory, and yet we've got seven of them right here going out the door. So I'm really happy with the profit take home. I know how I can make a few more dollars in the category than I already am. And I really do think that it's a good one to be focusing on based on these numbers that I've been able to generate here. Now the hat section guys, I've had a total of two sales come through. These two right here went as a bulk deal. They, The guy that was interested in the message me and he said, would you take 20 bucks a piece, including free postage? I said, yes. Um, so we've got a really good um, Melbourne Storm New Era hat there. And then we've got an Atlanta Braves uh, Major League Baseball hat there as well. So uh, two genuine products. I think 20 bucks, including free shipping is good for him and good for me as well. Uh, that'll only cost me $7.70 to put into a small box uh, and send it out the door. That is the way that I ship off my hats. I always put them into cardboard boxes. You've got to protect the brim. Um, this one here though, it's a really good hat for you guys to be looking for guys. It's a bolo for sure. Um, the five panel design is a popular one. And what I mean by five panel is just the fact that you've got the big front panel and then you've got four little seam lines uh, along the top there. So that's a five panel design. They are popular. It's vintage. It's uh, alcohol related, which is always popular. Um, this one sold for $50, but I did have it listed up for quite a while for 90 bucks. Uh, and then the first bit of interest that came in on it at 50, I just took it. But you could make a few more dollars on these if you can find them. Um, yeah, really good couple of sales there. Some good money, 90 bucks in three hats. All right, we're gonna have a look at the shoe category now, guys. It was a total of $127 worth of revenue, an average sale price of about $42. And I had the three sales that came through. But as you can see behind me here, I've got a lot of shoes in tubs here. There's a lot that I'm trying to sell and they aren't selling as well for me at the moment. I'm actually seeing that my average sale price used to be about $50 for a pair of shoes. It's now about $40, well, $42 as you've seen here in this video. So I'm also finding it on the other side of that is it's actually quite hard to buy shoes for a really decent price in the thrift stores and the flea markets like it used to be. I used to be able to buy them for 10, sell them for 50. Now I'm buying them for about 20 and selling them for about 40 and the margins are really a lot tighter for me. I'm finding it a lot tougher in this category, but nonetheless, three sales, this one here, a pair of New Balance women's running shoes. These have gone on to sell for $39. Uh, this was when uh, I was carelessly buying my shoes and not really paying too much attention uh, to the quality, which you really need to be doing. No wonder these have taken a really long time to sell. Um, I would not have bought that if we went out to the thrift store, which we're gonna be doing a little bit later in this video. Uh, I won't be buying shoes like that. So um, still though, good one to get out the door. Um, this one here, we've got a pair of sketches. Um, look, I was actually really surprised yesterday to see these ones come through. They Look, they are in great nick, uh, but they sold for $47.95, which I thought 
to be honest, for a pair of sketches in this market that I've just spoken about, I'm actually really surprised that they moved. I thought they would have been more of about a $35 sale price, but um, hey, happy to see them go. And then the last ones here, we've got the Vengefuls. Um, these have sold for about $40. I think it was a $40 sale price on these Adidas Vengefuls. I will quickly say, just a bit of a, a size guide, uh, just so you're aware when you're out looking for shoes. If you're not sure if it's a men's or a women's shoe and you're looking at sort of running shoes like this, um, the difference between US and UK, if it's a men's shoe, it's usually about a, a one size difference. So a US 10 versus a UK 9, that's typically a men's shoe. Well, it is a men's shoe, but a women's shoe might have a drop of about two and a half. So that US 10 might be a UK seven and a half. So it's a really quick little tip there for you when you're sourcing your shoes, just to work out whether or not they're men's or women's when you come to listing. Just pay attention to the US UK discrepancy. And if they're a lot tighter and a lot closer, it's always gonna be immense. This was the next one, guys. We've got a pretty funky old school iPhone 6S and uh, we've got a good sale price of 40 bucks for this thing. I actually have no idea if it works or not. I listed it for parts and uh, we got 40 bucks and considering it was just literally lying around the house, I'm sure you guys have got old laptops, old phones, anything like that. Even if you don't know if they work, even if you don't have the charges, just literally list it up for what it is and there is some good money to be made. I can't believe we got $40 for that. Now, as for the clothing section, I've just had the one sale come through, which was this one here, which was the My Hero Academia hooded jumper. Now, this is a really good anime show. Uh, we only got a $28 sale price uh, for it though, and I only paid about $8 for it in the thrift. So not a huge amount of profit. And to be honest with you guys, I am really dropping away from focusing on the clothing category. I've actually only got six tubs left to sell, and I'm still gonna continue with the wholesale bundles uh, that I did a few weeks ago. I'm gonna do another round of that. So if you did wanna get involved, if you are selling clothing, you're probably gonna have a better success rate than I am considering I'm just not listing it anymore. Um, so hit me up on Instagram, say that you're interested in some clothing bundles and we can work on it, try and get a few more out the door. And hopefully I can then clear out of the category and I'm just gonna focus on sports jerseys. Sporting jerseys just sell the best for me. And I actually enjoy selling them because I love my sport. So if you want some clothing, let me know. And the final category to have a look at is my favorite, my best seller, you guys know it, it is the DVDs, and we've had some awesome sales yet again come through in this category. A total of $413 worth of revenue, I had seven sales in the DVD category, so $138 in video games versus DVDs going on to sell for $413. It's a big, big difference. Um, we've got an average sale price of $59 for these seven sales, so I do wanna take you through them. Uh, let's have a look at the first one here, Revenge Pink Panther, plus a couple of others. It was a trilogy. There were three Pink Panthers that I did as a bit of a bundle. Uh, we got a $22 sale price on that one there. Look, I bought them for just a dollar a piece in the thrift store, so $7 worth of postage, $15 sale price off a $3 purchase. Not too bad considering it also was the cheapest sale that we had. Uh, now, this one I wanted to talk to you about as well. This was The Mentalist, a really, really good show to be finding. Uh, if you can find it in multiple seasons. I've got seasons two, three, and four here. We got a $28 sale price for it. I'm paying $2 a piece in the thrift for them. So six into 28. But I, the, one that, the thing that I wanted to talk to you about here was because I didn't have season one, rather than waiting to find season one and then list up seasons one to four, for instance, um, I just went ahead and listed them up as they were. I had two to four, so that's what I'm gonna list. Now, if I find season one when I'm out in the thrift store, I'll go ahead and adjust the listing. But for now, I just thought I'd go ahead and whack it up as it was. If it sells in the meantime, fantastic. And that's what's happened, 28 bucks there. So the odd seasons, the mixtures, the little bundles that you just simply find, don't wait. Don't, don't just leave it there in your death pile. Just go ahead and list it up and your chances are you'll make a sale. So that was cool to see come through. This one was a bit of a double, um, a double sale. The, the, the person bought both of these. We had uh, Roger Moore and we had Sean Connery, the 007 sets. Now you guys let me know who was better. Was it Sean or was it Roger? Um, I like to think Sean Connery is the man when it comes to 007, but cool to see these come through. One came in at a best offer at 35, the other came through full asking price, of I think about 40 bucks. Um, so there's about $75 worth of DVD sales in the 007s. I paid $5 a piece uh, for these in the thrift. So 10 bucks into 70 bucks, that's just really good numbers. And uh, the next one here as well is Rose Demand. Rosamund Pilcher, I don't know it, I don't know it, but it's BBC and BBC always does well for me. Um, there it is there guys, we've got an allotment of this TV show of eight uh, and we had a $59 sale price come through there. So there's just a bunch of different seasons or episodes, I don't even know what it is, but I just grouped it together 
Um, looked at the comps on eBay, it was telling me that it was worth about 60 bucks, and then sure enough, we got a pretty quick sell through rate uh, on those there, so that was awesome. Uh, this one I actually spent up on when I was in the thrift a couple of months back now. Uh, this is the ultimate collection of 007. This is a really cool collector set, guys. I paid $30 for it in the thrift store. I actually had somebody buy it for 100 bucks about a month ago, and then they canceled the sale and they didn't actually end up paying for it. So I put it back on, and it has gone on to sell this weekend. We got a $90 sale price on this one here. I don't think that's too bad buying it for 30 when the comps are telling you it's about 90 to 100 bucks. So that was really cool to see. Uh, but the bee's knees, guys, the best of the bunch that has been able to come through this weekend is an absolute beauty. We've got one of the best DVD sets to be finding, McLeod's Daughters, every single episode, seasons one to eight, the complete set. However, there was one issue, and that was this season. Oh no, not, not the fourth, it was the last season, season eight. We were missing the last disc of season eight, which was so frustrating. I bought this off a private pick when I was on the Sunshine Coast, uh, and I got it for a pretty decent price, actually, if I remember correctly, but um, we sold it for $139, guys, and it is missing that disc six. So a little bit like the season one scenario with The Mentalist, you might be missing certain discs, but as long as you go ahead and confirm that and then adjust your price accordingly, this McLeod's Daughter set would actually go on to sell typically for about $200, $180 to $200. But because this eighth and final season was missing a disc, I dropped the price down to 140 and I got it. I explained the fact that the disc one uh, was missing in there and, uh, and somebody's gonna be able to go ahead and pick up that final season for maybe 30 or $40 and they're gonna complete their set for 170 bucks, whereas all of them on eBay are around the $200. So um, cool to see that one go on to sell. The sell through rate for that, even with a missing disc, was about three days. So a really quick sell through rate in this category, guys. Not only do they make great money at $413 worth of revenue, but the average sale price of 50 bucks and the sell through rate, and the fact that these are gonna be easy to list up and ship off uh, every single time I buy DVDs, tells me just to keep playing in this category and I know I harp on it. I know that that's, it's what this channel has basically become, me just talking about DVDs, but my goodness, they are selling. <laughs> I guess I do sound like a broken record, guys, but this moment, this moment that I sit in the car and I drive to drop off the post for the Monday morning delivery, it, it's always a really satisfying feeling because it is my least favorite part. Not only do I do the Monday post, but I also film it. And then I go through the numbers and then I, like, it's all good, don't get me wrong, but what is it now, 12.15 and I started about 7 a.m. So it's a, it's a real lengthy process, but um, it, it's worthwhile. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let me know if you do, because I'll continue to make these videos. But um, we're gonna run into the thrift store now. I do need a few more items to pick up and sell. Um, inventory levels aren't too bad. I could just sit there. I've got a lot more comic books to list up from that comic book video that I put out a few weeks back. But um, they've actually been selling really well, the comic books, a bit of an update on that. I've had a few sales come through. I'm, I'm almost at a break even now with it. Um, and I've got so many more to list up. So that was just awesome. But uh, let's jump into the thrift. We'll, uh, we'll see what we can pick up today. Well, look what we've got here, guys. Some Patagonia. Very, very excited to be seeing this in the thrift. It was in really good condition, size small, and look at that, just the $6 price tag. So that's awesome, guys. I'm actually gonna do it as a giveaway. Comment the word Patagonia in this video, like the video, and subscribe to the channel to be in the draw to win that. I'll draw it next week. These are the Zoom Kyger 3s. They go for some good money, US size nine. That's not too bad. I'm paying just the $8, as you can see there. So some shoes some clothing, not too bad there, but then I found this though. This was a little Xbox console bundle in really good condition. It actually had five controllers. I went through and I had a bit of a look at all of those, five controllers, the console, it was tested. Apparently it was in working condition. I've since come back home and tried it and it definitely is. Um, so this is a ripping grab for 25 bucks. And uh, there was some really good games in there too. Minecraft, Skate 3, uh, Grand Theft Auto. All really good games that I, I typically always sell. So that was just awesome, and I was really stoked to be able to get my hands on it. Uh, the thick of it, really good DVD series, guys. Um, all those box sets, uh, BBC, I talk about it all the time. You guys know that that's worth what you're seeing there with the comps. Uh, and then there's some other little winners here as well. Ripping Yarns, the complete series. It goes for about $15. Uh, all these DVDs were a dollar a disc, which I don't think is too bad of a price point if you're gonna be picking out the right ones. Uh, this is an awesome TV show, Texas Walker Ranger, or Texas Ranger, or Walker, Texas Ranger, I should say. Um, goes for about 15 bucks a piece. So there's about $30 worth of value in there as well. So all up, a pretty good little run there.
So I ended up spending $78 in there. It wasn't meant to be 78 bucks, but the lady charged me as though the video games were separate to the console bundle for 25 bucks. So she's charged me, I think it was 17 games in there. So I had to pay an extra $17. Not the end of the world. I've done pretty well out of that op shop. It is one of my favorites. So um, yeah, it is what it is. But um, guys, huge episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully there was a heap of nuggets in there. There's some more thrifting adventures for you to go and check out right here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll see you soon.